Okay, so hopefully by now you've finished the first model that we did together and um, you're feeling a bit more confident with the software. Um, so today we're going to move on to something um, a little bit more advanced. Um, and we're going to be learning some new techniques, some new tools. Um, we're going to be creating this kind of scene that you can see here. Um, so you can see it's made up of lots of little pieces. Um, whereas before we just had sort of one model on its own. Okay, so this is going to be multiple things uh, combined into one scene. Okay, so we'll get started straight into it. So we're going to start with like the biggest elements of the model, um, which here you can see is going to be these crates. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that using some of the techniques we've already learnt, uh, but using them in a slightly different way. So as before, we're going to start with a primitive shape, which is going to be a box. Okay, let's expand that view. Uh, don't forget to turn your edge faces on, as always. Um, and something that is very important to remember is center the object to the world space. So in the X, Y, and Z values, they need to be at zero. So you can see the center of the object is right in the dead center. Again, that's going to help you if this is this model is going to be exported into some other um, piece of development software, perhaps like a games engine or something. I'm going to come over to edit and I'm going to make this um, perfectly square. So 100 by 100 by 100. Um, in my image, you can see obviously I've got um, more sort of geometry in this model, but as before, we're going to start with nothing um, and just build up from there with the tools which really is the best way to do things. Because if you start adding in all your segments, um, you end up with lots of geometry which is not needed. Um, and then your model has sort of unused polygons and things, um, which is not the best way to go about things. So we'll start with just that, just the box. Um, and first of all, I can see we've got these sections on the side of the crate. So convert to an editable poly. Go to your edge mode, and if you remember, we did this before. Get the two edges um, and push connect. Okay. Um, but before we go ahead and do any further, we can see that this has got the same kind of effect on all the corners. So what I want to do is use the connect dialog box, which will allow you to manually. Um, move this into a place. Okay. So I'm actually going to put two edges in and push those to about there. Again, like before, we're just going to be eyeballing it from the image rather than having um, actual measurements. So actually 60, that looks about right. Okay. So if I push tick, um, what I can then do is get to the other side and go to connect and push the dialog box again and you'll see that it's remembered exactly what I did previously so I can quite easily go around all the sides push connect the dialog box um, and it remembers everything so they will be identical okay really useful for anything that's going to be exactly the same on each side okay so that's those bits we can see then that we've got um, these uh, sort of what we call them blanks that go horizontally. Okay, so again, using connect, I'm going to let's make those a little bit smaller, a bit 70. Okay, and again, that's on all the sides, so I can just repeat the process um, nice and quickly with the connect tool. Okay, um, next we've got this um, one that's going diagonally, okay, and that's going to be um, our trickiest one. So what I'm going to do is, starting from this side, so it goes diagonally, so we want a connection that goes between these two edges here. Okay, so I'm going to press the dialog box again, and I'm going to right click on these arrows and it reverts them back to their default values. 
Okay, so that'll just be one connection um, not pushed or pulled anywhere. All right, that's fine. I'm going to do the same for this this little corner. Connect again. Um, but obviously that's way too chunky for what we need. So what we need to do in this case is we need to edit the vertices themselves, which we haven't done yet. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to slide this across in the X axis. It's about there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in my X value down here in my world coordinates. That's about 23. So I'm going to make that 25. Okay. The reason I want to know exactly what that value is is because when it comes to moving all these others into place, I'm going to repeat that value, which will make sense in a minute. So I'm going to move this one up in the Z. Okay, that one's going to be 75. Should be about right. Move this one down. It's going to be 25 as well. Move this one over this way. And that looks like it's going to be minus 25. Okay, so if I look in my side view, I can see that that looks exactly how I want it to look now. Because I've used those same values. So 75, minus 25, 25, and 25. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. So what we're going to do is repeat this process for each side. If you look at our image, um, they don't all go in the same direction. So this one is going in the opposite direction. So again, we need to get these two, which connect, these two, connect. Now go to the vertex, move this along, that's in the Y this time. So you can see it's uh, the Y axis I moved it in. So I can look at Y down here. And remember, I used 25 before, so I use 25 again. Z, I use 75. Y again down here, and uh, that's going to be minus 25. And Z again, going to be 25. So you can see, like by repeating those same values, it will be um, nice and symmetrical all the way around. Okay, so I'm just going to pause the video and do the other sides. Um, hopefully, by doing you know, repeating the process, you'll be able to do those yourself. Okay, so you should have that done now. Um, and if I just pan around mine, you can see that all the sides are done. Um, and you'll kind of notice that um, when you go around, it should be kind of like a zigzag um, with those lines. Okay, if you've done it right. Um, just something to show you, actually, um, just in case you go wrong. So I actually did do this myself, so which is why I thought I'd show you. If you've done one that's the wrong way around, for example, and you need to remove this so that you can redo it, um, if you just get the edge and you push delete on your keyboard, you're going to you know, punch a hole into your model, which you don't want. OK, so I'm going to undo that. Um, same as if you went to vertex and you push delete, you're going to remove all the polygons that are around it. So how do we do that? So once you've got something selected you want to get rid of, you need to come over to the side and push the remove button. So if we go to edge, push remove, it doesn't delete all the polygons as well. However, what it does do when you delete the edge, if you go to vertex, you can see that those vertices are left behind. Okay, so the edge is gone, the vertices are there. So you need to click vertex and remove those as well. Okay? If you go wrong, All right? But we want that there, so I'm going to undo that. Okay, so we've got our basic kind of geometry in place. Um, however, um, we don't have any, it's all just flat. Okay, so if I remove the edge faces, you know, you can't see anything going on at all. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is start the extrusions. So remember the extrude tool that we used before. So I'm going to get these ones first to start with. Extrude out um, maybe about three. Okay, and notice I use the dialog box again. Reason being is that I can come across here and get that polygon as well because that needs to come out with it. 
and use the dialog box and you see that it's remembered exactly what I did before and put that in place. Okay, so can these extrude and then the back all those polygons extrude. Okay, perfect. And we've got the top and bottom. Extrude those, but if we look at our image it doesn't come out quite as far as the others, so maybe we'll make that one two. These ones. And again, so it's remembered what I had for them before. Makes it nice and quick. Extrude. Extrude. Um, and then we've got the middle one, um, which will extrude. Maybe call that 1.5 or something. Extrude. So we extruded them all, all, all out, but they're all at different height values, so that when you've got shadows on and stuff, you'll be able to see uh, the detailing nicely. Okay, so that's all to get started with. Um, we'll leave it at that for now. It's going to change the color. That'll do. Okay, that's all for now.